Okay, so um, I'm Kate. I lead partnerships at Tiny Technologies, um, a world's most trusted what you see is what you get component for each text editing. And I'm also hold, holding certification from Nielsen Norman Group. Uh, it's a usability certification. And I've been working in branded content for more than 15 years. I hold um, um, both the certification, also won multiple awards in branded content, including Cannes Lions, Webbiz. Um, I've been on Cannes Lions jury once. Also was named one of most influential women in native advertising and by um, Native Advertising Institute in 2019. And um, my work have been featured in Harvard Business Review, Financial Times, TechCrunch, and many publications. I'm really, really passionate about content creation and all that surrounds it. And uh, this talk was inspired by our dilemmas, our internal dilemmas, as we've been figuring out how to best integrate AI capabilities into our product that didn't have AI capabilities before. And what kind of research back guidelines can we follow? Um, do they exist and how do we do that to uh, best um, you know, to implement AI in a way that is not disruptive and is actually useful for our users. So, um, first off, um, I'd like to uh, share that Microsoft recently uh, distilled um, lots of uh, research, like 20 years worth of research of human um, computer interaction, uh, and they gathered. Uh, 150 different recommendations that um, came out of all these studies, and they narrowed them down to 18 uh, guidelines and then tested them out to be practical and applicable, which is really important. And this paper kind of sums this up, and um, we, um, we will explore some of those guidelines during this talk. And the other um, really interesting recent articles by Nielsen that um, is called Articulation Barrier. And this um, recent article uh, is about how um, written prompts that are often used in generative AI tools are are dangerous in terms of inclusivity just because literacy is an issue even in highly developed countries. Uh, it can be a big percentage of the population can have issues with literacy and if you're asked to write extensive prompts, it can be actually um, not very inclusive and therefore Nielsen advocates for a combination uh, of uh, UIs that have uh, prompts that have um, you know commands over just relying on written prompts. So let's dive in. Um, um, the guidelines um, give you um, several um, cases of interacting with AI uh, functionality. Um, initially, as you just start um, during interaction when you are already um, engaging with an AI capability. And next one is if AI is wrong, if it makes a mistake, and over time, how does it evolve over time? And um, here we'll try to figure out how it all can apply to um, Moodle and uh, learning experience and how you add any AI capability into Moodle um, following those guidelines. So let's start with initial phase. Um, it's important to set expectations um, because AI can't do it all and it's important to explain to the user where are the limitations, what AI can and cannot do. For example, we just discussed plagiarism detection. It's important to explain uh, where are the limitations, what's possible, what is accurate, what is not accurate potentially. Um, and this gives you some expectations so you can figure out if you can rely fully on AI or um, you have to mind um, the limitation that, that are out there. Um, so during interaction, a few important guidelines is to uh, ensure that you adapt um, your um, services based on the context. Um, you show relevant information. So for example, there could be AI capabilities that are adapting to learners' progress or specific um, you know, um, interests or challenges. Um, you need to also match relevant social norms and definitely mitigate social biases. I think some of the Nielsen's recommendations that I just mentioned related to literacy barrier could fall into this category as well, making um, AI-capable tools more inclusive. 
So the next stage is when the system is wrong. As, as we know, all know, AI is often wrong. There are many uh, mistakes and hallucinations that can stem from just training data issues, biases, uh, maybe just uh, a mismatch between what user is trying to do, what AI is trying to do. So it's important to um, figure out how to react when uh, AI is wrong. So first off, we need to um, support efficient invocation um, make it, you know, ensure that you can uh, actually trigger it um, on purpose and it's not done just by default. Um, support efficient dismissal so you can uh, ensure that AI is uh, easily kind of dismissed when it's unhelpful for any reason. Uh, efficient correction and then um, also important guideline, ensure that you explain why system did you know, what it did. Um, and then over time, and there are multiple guidelines on how to approach um, AI capability over time as it trains and m becomes more, um, you know, adjusted to use cases or specific scenarios. And, and, I, and I, wanna I wanna highlight guideline number 14, uh, update and adapt cautiously. I think it's really important just because a system can uh, accelerate really fast and they can quickly adapt to certain, um, you know, specific use cases. For example, if we add capabilities of um, adapting curriculum to learners progress, it can go too fast and um, uh, this could actually cause disruption because users need to understand um, if you know why changes are happening what's going on it, 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 it should happen but it can't be that disruptive so uh, as mentioned we added um, AI assistant uh, a capability um, in TinyMC that's powered by GPT-3 uh, uh, by OpenAI so this uh, capability is um, uh, helping to um, enhance human writing, but at the same time, it follows the, the principles that I just shared. It definitely combines um, um, UI prompts, written prompts with uh, commands that you can actually customize to your specific use cases, and it can be easily dismissed. It uh, definitely shares the limitations, and it kind of a part of a uh, familiar interface. Um, so, um, just, I'm not sure we have five minutes, okay. So um, I don't think we have time for that, but just um, thinking about um, benefits of human-centered design, um, I just wanna um, highlight that. Um, I think that if we, uh, there is a ton of research that is already out there um, that uh, has been developed over 20 years, super valuable, and at the same time, some of those papers are actually not about AI, but they can definitely inform how we approach uh, AI-enabled platforms um, to make them um, more trustworthy. And if um, users can trust them, then adoption will be uh, much easier and more safe, even in um, spaces like education that definitely require more you know, caution about everything related to AI. Um, and um, I encourage you to take a look at this paper. It has a lot of useful uh, recommendations and also um, just, um, you know, uh, the Nielsen's recommendation about um, prompts is also, I think, super important to know just because, you know, uh, prompts are difficult to write <laughs> um, for anybody, but, you know, for some people it's impossible. So, yeah, thank you so much. We can Thanks very much. I think we have time for. I can't read. I can't read that far three away. Questions. Okay, we have time for three questions. I mean, three minutes. Three minutes. One minute per question. So, if you want to put your hand up, and Anna will come round with the microphone. Thanks a lot. Um, I have a questions on the. Let's say forward looking. I said at the beginning that you were a Nelson certified. I wanted to ask you. Do you think that the AI or the integrations in the system of interaction is going to change standard heuristics or an activity like information architecture for the design of user experience? For sure. I, I you know, I think that. The microphone, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. I, I, 
I think that it definitely will change the whole certification process and definitely the learning materials. Unfortunately, I got my certification before AI, but at the same time, I'm sure that, you know, based on um, what I know, um, some of the modules are updated as they were, for example, updated at some point for mobile design that completely changed how we approach usability uh, in many ways. Uh, but I don't think that we have enough data, even the, this article that I referenced, Nielsen's article, uh, he himself talks a little bit about how he doesn't have enough data to actually back this up, except for percentage of literacy um, all over the globe. But I think that, you know, as we progress, we get more data and then this becomes uh, easier to certify based on more research-backed, um, you know, information because certification by, by Nielsen Norm Group are all research-backed, usability research-backed, it's very important, I think. Thank you.